Welcome to Nevada Tune's newest episode. Today we have an annoying car that likes to lock itself every 30 seconds. But we have picked up the new M135 IX F40 2019 model car. It is a very subjective looking car, but it comes out of the factory with 450 Newton meters and 225 kilowatts or 306 horsepower factory. Uh, it has a 26 PSI boost target stock and has a ASIN eight-speed automatic gearbox that is primarily front-wheel drive bias, but it is all-wheel drive, and it will switch to all-wheel drive mode depending on the sort of driving profile and whether or not there's any wheel slip. It has an LSD in the front transmissions uh, differential, but in the rear, it does not have an LSD. It is open diff. So as we do a bit of a display of this car, you'll see it's fitted with 19-inch BMW M Sport wheels with a 225 by 35 by R19 tire profile factory. They are a PCD of 1, 5 by 112, which is different from the previous BMW um, wheels, which are 5 by 120. The offset is ET54, which makes them incredibly difficult to find aftermarket wheels for. There is quite a lot of room though inside the wheel wheel to fit wider wheels, but we have to maintain that sort of profile when it comes to the offset. Um, that most probably 10 millimeters give or take between the actual stock profile and the gap on the fender in here. As you can see as we come around the rear here, it has dual twin tip exhausts. It has a bit of a diffuser. It sort of looks a very similar to like an X1 sort of rear end a little bit. That's sort of the vibe I'm picking up. Uh, it has a rear camera. It's got fake vents. All the vents in the front bumper though are real. They do work. The rears are a little bit subjective. It's a 380 litre boot space total, and that's including removing the bottom section of the trunk, which I'd like to show you, but we have camera equipment in there. It has a panoramic sunroof. It has the live cockpit professional dash, which I'll now show you, and it has iDrive 7. So as you can see in here, we also have the upgraded M Sport interior. It has really nice Dakota leather bucket seats that are automatic in their profile and they have memory live cockpit on the instrument cluster and then the iDrive 7 as you can see there it has quite a nice interior design very very big on hexagons as you can see with the door handle it's very sort of hexagonally sort of shaped yeah <laughs> Right. I'm ready this time, man. I'm ready for it, I swear. <laughs> Alright. That dude's probably going to do burnouts. <laughs> probably, yeah. <laughs> I don't think he gives a flying fuck. Oh, no, he's just turning around. Is it because we were here? Nah, he's going to race us. He's going to try and catch us. Lol. Um, I guess, uh, so, we're in the car now. We're driving, obviously. I feel like I'm narrating fucking my whole life story at this point. Um, I guess overall, I've had this car now for, God, probably four weeks now, actually. Um, and living with it, it's pretty good. Uh, I've tried driving with kids in it. It's very tight, having the kids' seats and having two children and then putting a pram and baby stuff in the boot. It gets very full very quickly. Um, and unless you move the sort of subsection of the um, boot, because it's 360, unless you remove the extra flooring, then, then, then you get 380. Um, things like prams and stuff can be very tight to fit in. Beside all that fun family stuff though, the car's been pretty good. Factory, first and second gear are horrible. They are clearly torque limited heavily. They, the car feels like it's NA, in all honesty. Um, you only get full torque in those gears when you do a launch control, or if you tune it out like I have already. I have already tuned out those limiters because they are frustratingly annoying. The car drives and feels much better in first and second, especially driving around town. It feels like I actually have power now driving around. It makes it nice and fun. Um, the factory power setup's pretty good. It's, you know, that 225 kilowatts in that high RPM, 5,000, 6,000 RPM range factory, and the torque is pretty much onset from the get-go, 450 Newton meters from, I think, 1750 to 4250 RPM. Um, overall, it's pretty good. It feels pretty planted. It is 
26 psi if the fuel quality and the inlet air temperatures are ideal um, and given our fuel is a bit hit and miss I haven't always hit it I've hit between 24 and a half and 25.5 give or take um, but overall living with the car is very good you can sometimes tell that it is front wheel drive biased however especially if you're turning or if you're at like an intersection and you're turning and you give it a bit too much power in, in first or second gear like you can you can feel it sort of hook um, I updated the dynamic stability control modules to 2022 software because they released some changes with the new 2022 released model that basically uses essentially like an e-diff technology like you would have seen on the prior generations in the rear to use the brake pads to or the brakes rather to to brake a certain wheel to to minimize any traction loss even though this does have an LS, a mechanical lsd in the front it doesn't completely eliminate torque steer at low sort of speed settings right so it uses that to effectively eliminate torque steer altogether which it does do i have noticed that it is pretty good you can definitely tell the car's being limited but you don't get any jerking on prior versions i would have the steering wheel jerk inwards or like the direction that i was turning essentially like it was quite annoying um overall though like you can tell the car is all-wheel drive most of the i'd say most of the time to be honest it's it's all-wheel drive I don't feel like I'm being pulled. I feel like I'm sort of moving as one unit with the car. Handles phenomenally, like I've got an F22, you know, and yeah, it's a Sportline package, but this thing handles really nicely. You can chuck it into tight corners at speed and it just doesn't move. There's no body roll. It just sticks like it's on rails. It's actually a fun little car to drive around in. It is quite possibly the best car I have ever driven. It feels sort of like a, an M car, but it's not an M car. Um, the exhaust, the factory exhaust note sounds awesome. The factory throttle um, throttle pattern feels great. It, it's just, it's linear. Nothing, nothing about it feels sluggish. Overall, it's quite a very well-crafted M engineered car. I suppose later on in this video, you'll see footage of the uh, quarter mile times we went to the track. Um, yes, we could have gotten some slightly better times, and when I say better, I mean like fractionally better. Had the tyres not begun to lose traction, we were getting a little bit of traction loss during gear changing. Um, that could be rectified with some better tyres, but I think realistically we're looking at you know going from a 12.9 to maybe a 12.85. And as good as that is, I think we're at a good midway point to know what this car is doing numbers wise stock i will go and do a stock dyno run of the car just so we have a baseline of what it's made on australian dynos we've got no mods to the car um we're going to install an inlet and a charge pipe um probably in the next few weeks uh, and an inner cooler as well factory inner cooler is okay it's not great um but there's definitely room for improvement there um, basically what we're aiming to do on stock turbo is see if we can try and crack 300 kilowatts um, give or take I mean this is supposed to be 225 stock I mean BMW rates that at the crank but typically our experience is that this is a big pothole that I need to avoid wow fucking hell um, but typically when they rate them at the crank depending on what dyno you use sometimes they can end up being wheel versions um, and I'm speaking kilowatts but 225 is about 306 wheel horsepower give or take so 300 kilowatts is about 400 horsepower so if we can crack them on the 85 I'll be happy because that is a substantial increase I mean if you look at the prior generation F20 um, and the LCI not the non LCI but if you look at the, the F20 non LCI which is the N55 M135 those things came out with 500 newton meters and 225 kilowatts now Compared to this, this is 450 and 225. So a little bit less torque, but same power. Like it is, in its right, it is an M135, you know, but it's quite well at challenging those other cars, being it's a four cylinder instead of a six. The LCI models of the F20, which has the B58, they actually do about 240 kilowatts, give or take, but they'd still do the same 500 newton meters. So they do make a little bit more power, hit that bottle. They do make a bit more power than these do stock, but with a tune, I definitely think these will be able to keep up to a pretty good point. I mean, obviously, 
without going crazy in the car, yeah, we'll never end up matching what a six cylinder can do with, you know, maybe less mods. But this is a completely built motor factory. And when I say completely built, it's got a slightly bigger crankshaft than the other B48s. It's got slightly different forged rods. It has forged pistons. It's got a different compression ratio. It's nine and a half to one instead of the 10.2 or 11 in the other B48s. It's got a big Garrett turbo that's very close in size to the GTX uh, 2860R Gen 2. Yeah, so overall, this is definitely quite a very great platform that, BM, well, good platform rather that BMW's made. In my opinion, this is probably the only decent looking car they have released with this motor. It's a real shame. I mean, the 2 Series Grand Coupe, the front, the front half of the car looks great. The rear half looks terrible, to be honest. Um, I just think it should have been a coupe, you know, and then you've got the X2 and then you've got the Mini Cooper all four and, and frankly those cars are more family cars, they're not a sports car. Um, I mean, it would have been nice if the new G42 2 Series, you know, came out with, with this motor, they haven't, um, it's a shame. Uh, overall though, this is a, a quite a lovely car to drive. Watch this. Oh wait, my brake was still on. <laughs> Bye!